Welcome back to the shop, and thanks for joining me again. So I had audio problems with whenever I was filming this this job right here. I don't know what's going on with the GoPro or the mic or something, but there's a few clips in this video that I did not capture any audio. In the audio that I did, it was very bad. So I'm gonna have to talk you through some of this stuff, and then the good audio will just uh, pick up, you know. So what I have here are two flywheels from the motorcycle shop. I believe these are Triumph. Uh, yeah, I think they're Triumph flywheels. And uh, there's two different models there. One is for a fuel ejected bike, and one is fuel. One is for a carbureted bike. They have two different. the The flywheels are the same size, but the little machined divots on there. I don't know what those would actually be called, but it has to do with the timing and whatnot. Uh, those are in different places, so that's what distinguishes the two flywheels there. But uh, one's for a customer bike, and then one he likes to have on the shelf so that he always has one available for his little modification. There I am showing the little divots that's machined into it that you have to stay away from. You know, you can't cut those. But what you're going to do is remove the material up to that point. And I'm just talking about that there. You take the diameter down and then also go along the face down to where those two holes are and remove some of the metal off the back of the flywheel. So the last time that I showed this job, we had a bunch of guys that talked about how much did you take off. So I weighed them this time. So we got my dad's old Hanson scale and that's the one that he had used for whenever he was weighing his metal powder you know for metalizing he would always sell that by the ounce so that's what the old scale was used for and it's it's pretty pretty close it, it works pretty good still so I'm gonna go ahead and make note of the weight for each one of these flywheels so the first one there is uh, eight and a half pounds and I go ahead and I write it down and whenever we're through machining it we're gonna set it back on the scale and, and see what it weighs Okay, so our second one now, that one's that one's gonna weigh nine pounds. So there's a there's a half pound difference between the two. I don't know where it's at. They're they're pretty much this identical on size, so I didn't really pay too much attention. There's one little step there on the top that's that's not machined the same as the other, so maybe we got a, a little bit more metal there on that one, obviously from the scale. So that's what we're going to do is uh, we're going to go to the Monarch lathe and and set them up over there and do some lightning. But first I want to measure the the thickness, that wall thickness there, web thickness. Because what I do is I remove about half of that. So I simply just set it on a couple one, two, three blocks and I use my digital calipers to get a measurement of the thickness right there, which is actually about 13 millimeters thick or about a quarter inch so I just take about half of that thickness out whenever I'm facing the back side of it I'm gonna start I'm gonna chuck this side first this is the thinnest side I'm gonna start I'm gonna chuck it here since there's all that meat still there then machine this side and then flip it around and chuck this one since this is a more solid side so the OD of this measures like six inch, one hundred thousandths, about six and one eight. So I've already got the jaws preset, and I'm gonna go ahead and stick this in there, and just hold pressure against the jaws, and make sure all four of them's touching one of those little divots, which it is, and we'll check the face and make sure that we have our our face running nice and true. So I'm gonna I'm gonna indicate the OD in the face and after I get that indicated I want to use we're gonna get in here and we're gonna measure the ID and and see if it's uh, running true with the OD we'll go ahead and see how far out it's it's running right now not too bad make sure it's kinda of snug <laughs> right on those uh, letters that were etched on there
All right, so you see got some waviness going on and some of that's from chucking it right here, doing a little bit of squeezing. I'm gonna go ahead and check the face and see where we're at there before we go any further. About two thousandths. All right, I think I can, we'll see if we can bump it in. Let me get a hammer. All right, that's within tenths on those two jaws, and then we'll go to that one. That's about one. Let's see if we can get that one. Okay. Faces with intents. A little bit of wavy of this there. I'm just tightening the highs there. We're only got that was like one thousandths movements going on right there, so just barely tighten it. Pretty well centered. So we'll make sure that we didn't move our face. I hope I'm not boring you guys to tears with this. This is, uh, this is just something that I try to show when I can because I have so many people that react to the indicating part of my, of my work, you know, and what I show. So any chance I get to try to show it again, I show it. All right, so we're just a little bit. Okay, that's within tenths, less than a half a thousandths. That's less than a half a thousandth. So let's go ahead and check that ID, this tapered bore here, and see how close it is. We're going to change it up a little this time. I'm going to use my brown and sharp hole attachment. This is just like the Starrett that I've always used. And Mr. Pete. I seen him show one of these when he was going through his stash at that auction. He picked up a bunch of stuff and he had one of these and he skipped right over it, Mr. Pete. These things are awesome. Hopefully you kept that. It goes right here on the indicator. And you can quickly convert it to an ID attachment. So this is where we'll make use. We'll get it really close right here. Because there is a keyway. And I can use my fine adjust to just get in here and touch it. Now I want you all to see that. I haven't cut nothing I want y'all to see how close that is let me get you in there just looking at that that's like two or three tenths of being running true with that bore right there and we are touching that I'll move the, the fine adjust see you can see that's where it jumps off the keyway right there and comes back on so that's pretty dang good <laughs> all right well let's go ahead and set up a tool and we'll start cutting it another clip with no audio so what we're going to do is we're going to crank the carriage up and touch the tool next to one of those machine divots there just very very lightly just come up and just touch it I'm going to use my indicator there on the ways and preload it just a little bit. I'm going to back the tool away from it 15 thousandths. And then you take, you, you take and rotate it by hand and make sure everything's going to clear, that there's no problems there. And then you're going to go ahead and reset the indicator to a zero point, and that's where you'll stop your cut. Once I finish turning the OD there, when I come up to that face for the last time, I'll feed in an additional five thousandths and then face it back to clean the face up nice. And that'll put us, that'll end up putting us ten thousandths away from those machined divots there. So we're turning that down to five and five eighths. And I'm using my Shars Aventor digital calipers 
just mentioning that because I have a lot of guys ask me about that. Those are pretty good calipers, and you can pick them right up from Shars. So I want you to listen to the audio here. That's 60, 65,000, so I'm going to dial in right there. See how it went from scratchy to, to good, just out of nowhere. 65, and then when we get in there, I'll feed in five thousandths and face it back. Go in five and pull the tool back out. Five and five eighths. Okay. So we're going to move on to this face now, and that diameter I turn it to three and three quarter. It's going to be a little bit outside of those two holes right there. So I'm just going to come in with my tool. I'm going to just shoot for a spot right there, and I'm going to set my dial to zero. And I'm going to go ahead and scratch it, so it's a visual reference. As I'm facing in, I'll know that that zero is going to be my stop point right there. And then I'll measure it to see what the diameter is. So this is where I said we're going to take a quarter inch. Let me go ahead and get it touched off and then set a zero. So I was cutting into that, uh, that little hole that drilled in there whenever they balance it. I had a lot of people make comments about balancing these things after I do this. The, the customer handles the balancing after I do this right here. There should be very little balancing that has to be done. So, you know, the way this is going to be machined, true though. But that's on their end. They do that, not me. Alright, so we're coming up to our zero. I'm just going to go ahead and back out. Take a little measure it and see where it's see where it's at. Actually, I hit under already. <laughs> so we'll just go to three. We'll go to 3.7 inches. So that doesn't matter. It's just a nominal, just something to shoot for because it gets close to those holes there. All right. So these are 16th passes. This would be one eight total right here. So we'll do it. In, do it in a total of four cuts. Let me see if I can speed that up a little bit. Alright, there we go. Okay, we got the diameters done, the face done, so I'm going to drop in my trusty MCHNN tool just cut some bevels on the corner. I don't know if I'm going to be able to get this one. We'll see. Yeah, we can. There we go. So what I'm going to do, since these flywheels are the same diameter, I'm gonna go ahead and pull this one out and I'm gonna and I'm gonna chuck this one up and go ahead and get this side machine just like that. And then, and then I can reset the chuck to uh, turn the other side. It's a little warm. Wiggling around about maybe two or three tenths. So I'm going to go back to the face here. That's within a half a thousandth. 
Nice. All right, let me get you in there and let you see it. Barely in movement. We're good to go. All right, more of the same on this one, so I won't bore you with the same old cuts, and we'll bring you back when we flip it around. All right, back to the chuck and more indicating. So there's our first side machine. I'm gonna go ahead and chuck on this diameter right here. I've already got the, the chuck set. So we should have a nice clean face right there that we can push this up against. And we'll, we'll verify it with the indicator. Get it close. We get it. If it's out a lot, it usually moves on the face, so I like to try to get it close and then and then work on the face some. It's about a half. I think that's going to be about it. I'll probably get one or two comments about why don't I just use two indicators. And yeah, you can use two indicators. I've just, I've just got this one set up that I always use. And that's, that's just how I'm used to doing it. I just go back and forth. You know, if you want to use two, you can. But that's just how I like to do it. That's the only reason why. Because I like to do it. I mean, we're still there. So that needle's bouncing around. Everywhere it's moving is within half a thousandths on that. So we're good to go. Doing the same thing here, just getting our stop set and making sure that everything clears. So we're good to go. Hot chips, man. All right, go in five and then we'll bring the tool back. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and knock the other one out. It's the same exact thing, and then we'll come back and we'll weigh them and give you some final words all right there they are got both of them finished up and they should be uh, pretty much identical on the sizes anyway so let's go ahead and weigh these things and see uh, see where they finished off at we'll start with this one right here this is the one that I called multiple divots and let me make sure you can see the, the scale there this one weighed nine pounds. All right, so we're just gonna call that six pounds. So, that's a total of three pounds lost right there on that one. Go ahead and come back up and I have to um, keep playing with that reset right there. That's an old scale. This is what Dad used for this metal powder whenever he did uh, metalizing. Okay, five and a half. So that matches. So both of them, both of them have an exactly a three-pound loss of weight there. So now we know what we what we've taken off. Three pounds. I, I actually, I think I weighed them a long time ago, but it's, it, it was been so long that I just, I couldn't remember what it, what exactly they had weighed. So 
there we go. I can give him a call and let him know these are done, and that'll that'll get his his little project going. So, hope you enjoyed watching, and uh, you maybe you picked up a tip or two there along the way, and we'll see you on the next job. Okay.